It's no secret that Chrome OS is a real pain in the side to use on a daily basis. When I sold my Windows laptop about a year and a half ago and I was looking for some alternatives, that was actually around the same time when I made my most popular video to date about installing Windows on a Chromebook. And so I decided, why don't I just use this laptop now? Because it does pretty much everything that I want it to. It's relatively cheap and I don't need to go out looking for a new laptop. And so for the past year and a half, I have been using this, an Acer C720 with Windows 10 installed in it. Now, maybe you are considering um, getting a cheap Windows laptop and you're considering doing this method, or you already have a Chromebook and you want to install Windows on it because like me, you don't particularly like Chrome OS. This video is mainly going to document my experience on using Windows on a Chromebook for the past year and a half. Now I've used a variety of computers. I have used, well, obviously a desktop behind me. I have used a Chromebook. I have used a 2020 MacBook Air, a 2015 MacBook Air, and some older, cheaper Windows laptops. And my main issue with a lot of the cheap Windows laptops is that they have bad touchpads. That's a big thing for me. The keyboards are just very, very mushy. The screens are not great. Usually they're going to be TN panels, not IPS or VA. And Honestly, they are just big and clunky. A lot of them have big frames, which is really not ideal, especially when I'm carrying it around to school because that is the main purpose of my laptop is I wanna be able to bring it to school and use it for schoolwork. Now, one of the biggest issues that I had using Windows on a Chromebook is that the battery life kind of sucks. Unfortunately, I don't think there is any workaround. I tried multiple power options on Windows, but so far I could not get it to last more than around four hours on a single battery charge, even doing simple things like editing a Google Doc. There's also some pretty significant battery drain, which means that even if you're just going to be editing documents, you pretty much have to bring the power supply with you everywhere, the charger everywhere, um, in order to make sure that you don't run out of battery. Now, I was really only using this laptop for basic tasks such as document editing, uh, Microsoft OneNote, maybe Spotify, and some Discord. That was pretty much about it. That was basically most of what I would do on a daily basis. There really wasn't room for much else because the specs of the laptop are really not that impressive. It has an Intel Celeron 2955U, four gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SSD. Now the total cost for the entire build was around $170 for the computer, the screen upgrade, the SSD upgrade, and the power cable. The laptop itself with the power cable was about $80. The screen upgrade was about $60 and the SSD was about $30. A couple notes on some of these upgrades. First of all, the screen, I would say if you're going to get a Chromebook like this and you can afford to get the screen upgrade and you're really committed, like you're sure you're going to get this, you want to invest the money, I would say that getting the IPS screen upgrade is pretty much a must need or a must have if you're going to be doing it. it the screen looks a lot better and the experience overall is a lot better, um, especially on such a low end model like this one. Now, as I said before, cheap Windows laptops are really no stranger to a hefty amount of poor design, but Chromebooks on the other hand are typically meant to be, they're meant to be cheap. They're meant to be on the low end and they're meant to be for people who are on a budget. And that's why I think that installing Windows on a Chromebook is a great option for a lot of people because yeah, you do have to trade off the battery life, which is obviously not ideal in any situation, but if you can keep it charged and you can keep the power supply with you, um, I would say that the experience on average is a lot better. You can upgrade the screen pretty easily. It's pretty easy to find replacements, um, especially for the Acer C720. It was really simple to just find the screen, pop it out, put the new one in. Uh, the touchpad is great. I would actually say that although it is on the small side, the touchpad on this Chromebook is actually very, very nice. And I would 100% be able to use it on a daily basis if I had to go back to using this machine. The keyboard is not amazing. It's a little on the mushy side, but it is definitely very usable and I enjoy typing on it. I would say that it is a decent typing experience. It's not terrible at all. And it's nothing to be worried about if you're looking at this in terms of the screen, the keyboard and the trackpad. Now, bringing the Chromebook to school was obviously not comparable to an experience like with a MacBook, where it's a lot slimmer, you don't have to carry around the power cable wherever you go. Yes, it's on the smaller side, it's a little thick, but it's not that heavy, and it's really easy to just pop it in your back, and it, I really cannot feel the difference between uh, the Chromebook and a MacBook, for example. And now we get to the main point of this video, should you install Windows on a Chromebook and use it as your daily driver? If you're someone who has a relatively low budget, say around 100 to $300, if you're willing to put in the work to find a, a Chromebook model that is compatible and also suits your needs and do the upgrades, install Windows, etc., 
Or if you already have a Chromebook that you don't want Chrome OS on, then this process is probably not too bad for you. I would say that you're going to get a better experience installing Windows on a Chromebook than you are on a cheap Windows laptop. If you're someone with a higher price range or the battery life issue is a big deal for you, this is probably not the place to look. Now in preparation for college, I decided to buy a new computer and I got this, the 2020 MacBook Air. It does a lot of things that I wanted to do. I don't really have a lot of negative things to say about it. The battery life is great. The performance is great. I can do a lot of things. I can have multiple tabs open, finally, unlike this one. Um, I can do Photoshop, video editing, even play a couple games as well. I really only have to recharge the computer after around two to three days. There is relatively no battery drain. And another big thing is that the speakers on the MacBook are 10 times better than whatever is in this piece of garbage because the speakers in the Chromebook are terrible. I'm not sure if it's the drivers for Windows specifically, but the speakers, if you're trying to watch any kind of media on the Chromebook, I would advise you to look in other places because this is not it. Now, obviously the MacBook is gonna give you a much better experience. I know it has for me, but it's also seven times more expensive. So if it's going to be a big financial burden, you might wanna look at the Chromebook, yeah? All right, that's all for this video. Solid Chromebook, great price, um, great for the value too. If you want to check out my videos on any of the other topics that I posted on this Chromebook specifically, or for installing Windows on a Chromebook, I will leave those in the description below. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. See you next time.